I'm back. Well, this time uh, I'm reviewing me, <laughs> which is a bit weird, really. Uh, but here we go, uh, the Gravity Wave CD. And what I'm going to do is uh, you're going to get to hear some of each track. You'll like some of it, you'll dislike some of it, but to be honest, every single track's quite different. Uh, so there's always going to be something on here that you will like. Uh, I'm pretty sure of that, whether it's the sort of heavier stuff or the... Well, let's run through it and see what we've got. It's all exciting stuff. You know, back in 2012, I uh, started to... Actually, started to complete it <laughs> with Alan Bruce. Uh, but I had this uh, health problem. Well... About two years in, it was going to be completed, but I sort of, from 2012 on, went a bit slower and slower until I ground to a halt in about 2014, I think it was. And I had uh, this prostate cancer, which threw me back massively. Anyway, it's all gone now. I'm all still here. And uh, this is the net result. Gravity waves. Yeah. It, uh, it's got 16 tracks on it. And... Uh, some of them go back a very long way, which you're going to learn about, because I'm going to tell you a little bit of an insight into each track, what they're about, how they were influenced, and stuff like that. Uh, so let's get down to it. Well, let's open this thing up. Ah, I've got the pick. Ah. Well, I might as well use it for this. Everybody says I can't play. <laughs> well, that's not quite true. As you will find out. Yeah. So, you get your gravity waves, we've got a bit of Einstein there, and we've got one or two other things going on in here that I'm not really going to show you. Well, there's the CD, in living colour. Yeah, proper deal. Oh, I've got a reflection of the camera there. Proper deal. And it sort of talks about a bit inside here. But I'm not going to bother with that, we're going to get straight down to it. In reality, the whole album's original concept came from one idea and it was on the first track it's called gravity waves and it's just a piece of guitar and you might say oh, what's that about well let's take a listen idea. Now here's the story. Gravity Waves was just played on a single guitar through an amplifier, uh, a JTM 45, and what happened was I used an Eventide Eclipse to get this sound. But originally the track, uh, I was using a, a Soraya Tone HRM which is like, basically, it's a Dumble clone, if you know what Dumble is. If you don't, check on the internet. Oh, it's all good. Anyway, one of the tubes was failing. It was a preamp tube that was beginning to fail, and it, it made this sort of really... It added a distortion to the clean channel, but it's a really nice distortion. Yeah, I still have the tube out there, put away safe um, for another time. But that inspired me to write Gravity Waves, the track. Now, it's just an intro track. Don't think that that's all oh, the albums like that. No, it isn't. But that's what's behind Gravity Waves. And there's a, another track or two underlying that, uh, that particular piece of guitar that we just heard. And you'll have to make your own mind up where it is in the other tracks, won't you? There you go. Well... We're moving on to track two, and that's called Before the End of Never. Let's have a listen to that.
Okay, well from that, uh, you get the idea. Yeah. Well, Before the End of Never is a pretty laid back sort of track really. Uh, it's not metal. But it's, it's got some good bits in it, let's put it that way. And if you think of the title, well, what's the title about? Uh, well, it's a conundrum. That's a great word. It's something that can't be <laughs> before the end of never. And uh, the title really uh, was chosen because, well, it's sort of part and parcel of gravity waves, if you get me. The guitar was recorded on a, a Mesa Boogie Road King 2 and probably uh, my Ibanez RG550. Nice and simple. <laughs> Channel 3, and that's where I usually like it. And it sounds quite good. It also features uh, a sort of uni vibe in the, uh, the sort of intro bits. There's a couple of intros throughout the song. and uh, Yeah, quite nice. I just thought it would be different. Alan does a great job on it too. Now I want to talk about uh, Trail of Tears and what that's about and why it's on this album. But first, here's a listen, because uh, it's quite a, uh, an incredible track, I think, and for what it represents. Here you go, Alan. Take a listen to this. at with that one but there is a story behind it and uh, let's talk about that uh, particular aspect uh, for a few minutes you know I go over to America quite a lot and I, I have a lot of dealings with America and uh, it always makes me think back to what was there you know when I'm over there to what was there before everything as I know it and I always come back to one thing it's called American Indians and anybody who knows the story about the Trail of Tears uh, can get the idea where this came from. In fact, it was actually built around the idea of Trail of Tears and how sad that was and uh, you know, what the American people, the American Indians, uh, had to pay in blood, sweat and tears uh, to give away their land, I guess. Now, some people disagree. <laughs> Don't worry, it makes no difference. But... If you listen to the track, as you just did, uh, you'll also notice that it's got a sort of free, sort of, I don't mean free as a bird type of thing, I mean free as in free the band. Uh, uh, brilliant bass playing, uh, the bass guitar in free was. And I know that Alan Bruce, the guy that uh, wrote the words, does all the singing and plays bass, uh, did a real great job. He, he did exactly what I wanted. And uh, it's not often that you can find a guy where you can work like that with him and uh, get these great results. Anyway, that's Trail of Tears. And the reason it's on an album called Gravity Waves is if you think about this, and there's a few tracks like this. Well, actually, there's a lot of tracks like this. They're stuck there in time. They can't move forward. They can't go back. They're just stuck. And you're only, only going to ever learn about it, uh, of what went with the Trail of Tears and, and this sort of thing, purely from what people have written. You can't be there. You can never be where it was, if you get me. And that relates to time, and time relates to gravity. I like this. Uh, so there's a number of tracks that are built around that sort of idea where... There's no getting away from it, so to speak. 
Okay, let's move on to number four. It's a very interesting track. Well, on the Gravity Wave CD, track number four is called Taipei Girl. Oh man, what's that about? Well, anybody who doesn't know where Taipei is, it's actually the capital of Taiwan. And I used to go to Taiwan uh, a lot in the probably mid-80s. Yeah, about that sort of time. Well, let's take a listen at the track. Here we go. Taipei girl, never forgotten. I said the Taipei girl, left me beside it. Taipei girl, you're wondrous. Taipei girl, what's all of us? get an idea where that's coming from. Sade. The only thing that's scary about that track <laughs> is its history. And once again it's stuck in time. It's stuck in time when I was actually there. So uh, yeah it means something to me. Time and gravity remember that. But I was in Taipei and I met this uh, company representative, this girl named Sonny. And I remember her saying to me something that struck me at the time. She said, I've never seen snow. I don't know what that's like to touch. I just thought that was quite amazing. But, of course, it's not amazing. There are people all around the world like that. It's just that when you're 30 years old or thereabouts, maybe 35 or something, I don't know, I forget. Uh, that's a bit of a shock to you, because it never happened before. So this song is all about... Sunny, the girl from Taipei, who, who knows where she is. I only met her once. But uh, it's all very interesting stuff. And, uh, yeah, Sade. <laughs> Who'd have thought it? Yeah. So many people have said that uh, to Alan and myself, uh, that Taipei girl needs selling to Sade. Who knows? Maybe we will. Okay, so the next track is The God Particle. And the God Particle, well, as some may know, is all about, uh, it's another name for a thing called a Higgs boson. Or boson. Yeah, something like that. Let's take a listen. Then I'll tell you more about the track. Atoms bound to collide, collide Silently collide. we wondered Does the world end today? Man's power ever growing Still poverty's the great divide, divide Coming to a town near you Ever decreasing circles Reality deja vu Nearly there, time to choose Nearly there, time to choose Nearly there, time to choose Okay, well I hope you get the idea of that one. But one thing you perhaps didn't pick up is that that track was actually recorded live in the studio. So all we had was a guitar and a bass and we built it uh, actually around the original idea that I had for gravity waves. You'll notice that it's in there if you listen carefully enough. And uh, highly likely recorded on a Marshall. And that would have been a Marshall Satriani head yeah, at that time. And uh, I used a PRS 1991 Custom 24. Somebody else now has. And I, and I, I don't know what bass he used, but uh, it sounded good. <laughs> really good. God Particle, uh, 
really sort of reflects some of what this is all about. You know, the time, the gravity, the universe, and everything else that goes with it. The Higgs boson thing uh, was just the flavor of the month of the time. So, hence it ended up like that. And that's a story of uh, God Particle. Uh, it's a nice track, yeah. I like that one. Al's got some great bass playing on there. Yeah, cool. Oh, you there. Well, moving on to uh, track six on the album, the Gravity Waves album. It's Al's blues. <laughs> well, what's that got to do with me or the universe or time or gravity? Well, not a lot, but let's have a listen to it first before we make our mind up. Here you go. Tempted to taste that thing She dressed me in the new shop suit Pulled out my feelings and flushed them down the garbage chutes Down the garbage chutes I said the garbage chutes Yeah, the garbage chutes Some fun boys, didn't we have a time? Didn't I have some fun boys? Didn't I have a time? Devil made us her playthings. Oh, there you go. You get the idea of Al's blues. But man, what's that doing on a Gravity Waves album all about the universe and time and the rest of it? Well, first of all, this is a track uh, that Alan Bruce actually wrote. And I think he did a great job of it, you know, it's a sort of ZZ Top Blues, almost, if you will. Uh, I didn't play on it. <laughs> it was one I missed. And he played better guitar than I would have anyway, so oh, it's just life. But that's the one he did his guitar on. Uh, I'd like to say that he, he can only play the old-fashioned stuff. But, <laughs> but it is a blues, it's a ZZ Top thing, and uh, if you think of blues... Blues, again, comes back to this time and thing, and it sort of stuck a bit like, sort of like Trail of Tears was, and that's why it's on the album. You know, the fact that he begged is another story. No, he didn't beg. <laughs> but the, the fact is, that's why Al's Blues is on there, because it, it depicts something stuck in time, and uh, time and gravity are absolutely linked. So that's Al's Blues. And you can thank Al for it. He, he, having said that, he, he was really good at it. Really good. Let's move on. We got a bit heavier. Well, what's 112 all about? That's the name of the track. 112. Well, let's take a listen first. Yeah. Here we go. Feel it in deep, roll your bones. Noise in the walls on your hosts Falling, fall for the tricks Shut down, reality's a bitch Your mind play tricks on you Mindset, shaping all get the idea of that one. Very different than all the previous tracks. Once again, it's a track that's written about a particular subject and it's stuck in time. It's written about 112 Ocean Avenue. Oh, you don't know about that? Well, you probably do, but not as you know it. <laughs> so go and figure what Ocean Avenue is and then you can come back and tell me. 112 Ocean Avenue oh, has to be. And uh, there's another thing, stuck in time. And it's, uh, it's a subject that's designed, I guess, well, not originally, <laughs> but designed these days, in my mind, to be more of a metal -y type of track. Which is exactly what it is. Uh, yeah, 112. 
it was played on a Road King 2. You knew it would be. I'm probably on the uh, Ibanez 550 Limited. That's just life. <laughs> Let's move on. Well, track 8. That takes us when we've done track 8. Halfway. <laughs> but track 8's a track called uh, Crying Out. And uh, there's no particular reason for the title on this one. It's just actually crying out the song is actually all about Gravity Waves and the album, among other things. So you have to just sort of go and figure. Anyway, let's have a listen at it. Uh, this one uh, is basically one of my favourite tracks. I'll just say that one. you get the idea of crying out it's uh, it's a track that I, as I said is one of my favorite tracks yeah so when was it written well it was written some time ago and uh, probably written on uh, the TSL 100 uh, yeah tube amp from Marshall and probably with uh, that Ibanez 550 limited and uh, nice track, yeah, very laid back. Well, it's got these nice guitar bits, and there's a bit in the middle where it sounds a bit like a keyboard, but it isn't a keyboard. And uh, yeah, it was one of them pedals that I've reviewed, and I just thought I'd throw it in there. Oh, and by the way, uh, on Before the End of Never, there's some saxophone that Alan played that on a guitar. <laughs> that was from a similar device. Uh, sounded awesome, yeah, just perfect for the job. As does uh, this one in Crying Out, it's in about the middle. And then we, we sort of fade along. Anyway, you get the gist of the track, it's a real nice track and uh, enjoy it. Now sometimes when you write an album like Gravity Waves, you know, you can write a lot of personal sort of stuff in there. And uh, the next track is a track that I wrote on a computer and uh, enhanced it with guitar. There's no bass, I don't think he played bass, I don't think Alan played bass on Cohen. It's called Cohen. And the track's actually nothing to do with uh, gravity. <laughs> but it's a lot to do with time, at least in my case. I used to have a mate, you know, I used to drive around in a Corvette. And uh, he had a Pontiac, you know the one with the bird, bird on the front? Yeah, on the bonnet, a black one. I remember the guy, uh, his name Pete, used to be down the bottom, you know, of the drive. And you could always tell when he was there. He got this big Australian hat and he smoked these cigars as if they were getting out of fashion. But every time he was there, you could hear this, this engine, this V8, you know, big blown exhaust and all the rest of it. And uh, I can still see Pete to this day of him down the drive with the engine ticking over, saying, hey, Tony. Actually, he'd say it like this. He'd say, g'day, Tony, because <laughs> you're Australian. Uh, which is another story. Anyway, Pete isn't with us anymore, and uh, when he passed, this is a track that I wrote. And that's also, it's stuck in time. I can hear, I can hear that V8 just in there, man. Awesome. Take a listen.
dedicated to Pete, wherever you are, man. All the best. Stuck in time forever. Okay, moving on to track number 10, Protector. Now this track doesn't, if the truth's known, doesn't really have anything to do with gravity waves or time. It's just a track we wrote. <laughs> I wrote the music and Alan wrote the words and uh, he played bass and I did the rest, I think, on this one. And uh, yeah, it had been around for a number of years, in fact. And uh, there's one little section of this track at the end where there's a load of guitar playing. And uh, that had been on the internet, I think, since 2011. Uh, but that was just a quick mix in 2011, and from there onwards, oh, we'll come back to it, and we, we never actually did. And I know that this was actually recorded on that Road King 2 uh, with a Steve Vai, uh, Ibanez 7V. Uh, without question, it was. So let's take a listen. an interesting track. Uh, as I said, it's been around for a while, uh, but we only did the words to that one about uh, probably three or four months ago. So in the respect of the words, it's recent. In the respect of the track, it was literally probably 2010, 2011. Uh, too good to throw away, for sure. Uh, I think it's the remnants of, uh, of another album I did. And, uh, Oh, let's save that for the next one, but the next one took its time. Well, this one's called Rainy Days, and uh, it's got a real interesting story behind it. And uh, It's a track I wrote a very long time ago. Uh, you might be able to tell that, but that doesn't really matter. Uh, the fact is it's on there for a particular reason. Let's take a listen. Instrumental one. have Rainy Days. Now Rainy Days is a track, as I said, I wrote a very long time ago. In fact, I wrote it in about 1983. And it's sort of hung around ever since. Never been released or anything like that. Even though I'd done other albums, I never actually went back and did that one, that track. But Rainy Days uh, comes around from that same idea of being stuck in time. And, you know, there's a lot of guys who equate to this. Uh, you remember when you was young, you sort of four or five or six, and you, want, you were just about to go outside to play, and uh, it started raining. <laughs> I 
I can almost see you now standing by the window, or looking out that window, watching the rain come down. I like what Janis Joplin said once. Uh, yeah, you wanted to go out, but your mum and dad wouldn't even let you, you know, that sort of thing. And uh, That's what Rainy Days was about when I wrote it, that idea. So now you know. <laughs> what was he recording on? Um, yeah, one of the amps out there, sorry, out there. And uh, yeah, which guitar? Yeah, one of the guitars out there. <laughs> now then, we've got a track called Time Theory. Now, Time Theory started out completely different than how it ended up. And uh, there's a good reason. And I'll let you into the secret. I don't, I don't mind telling you how crap I was. <laughs> Anyway, basically, I wrote this, this track called Time Theory, and uh, somehow, don't ask me how, you get to find out about this much more later on. All I can say is that the lead guitar on the track was out of time. But it wasn't out of time when I played it. It was just out of time when it came back. So I decided that ultimately, after trying to rework it for a number of weeks and rewriting backgrounds and uh, all sorts of stuff. Uh, I decided to just rewrite the music. So I put the cans on one Sunday morning with the backing that we had uh, completed. Bass in there, all the rest of the stuff. And I just played. <laughs> so uh, you'll get what you get. And uh, that's time for you. It is instrumental, as I said. Here it comes. So you get the idea of time theory. Well, there you go. What did I record it on? I don't know. But that's what it sounds like. Well, we come on to track 13. Uh, it's called Chasing Gravity. And uh, yeah, it was written all about gravity. <laughs> so I had the music completed, but uh, didn't have any of the lyrics at the time, you know, because that's the way we work. I do the music, Alan does the lyrics and bass. So we had this track completed, except for the vocal. And we wanted something with a, a good chorus. It's got a great chorus in it. And uh, one, so we doubled the vocals up and uh, made a lot of difference. Take a listen. Closing in, getting closer. Closing in, getting closer. Chases on, adrenaline goes. The one they try to contain. Chasing Gravity reminds me of a track that somebody like Iron Maiden would have written. Uh, no problem with that, because I like Iron Maiden, yeah. Uh, but there you go, Chasing Gravity, and uh, we got this chorus going, and uh, yeah, cool. What did I write it on? Well, you'll have to wait and see uh, what I come up with in the other video. You know, the one about the making of gravity waves. 
Yeah, all very interesting. Okay, well, I've got another track here. This one's called Beside Myself. And the way I described this when I wrote it uh, was I wanted to write a track of somebody that was so uh, intensely enraged <laughs> that they were standing outside their own body almost. I know it sounds ridiculous, but don't worry about that. It's things like that happen in music. Well, anyway, they're standing outside. They're beside themselves with rage. And it's, it's more of a metal -y type of sound, really, rather than most of these others uh, that are on here. Uh, so let's have a listen. Go. There you go, that's called Beside Myself. That's sort of Alan Bruce's take on Ozzy Osbourne. <laughs> Rock on Ozzy. Yeah. That's as near as you're going to get to time and gravity on that track. Well, what's up next? Opto Miss Trick. <laughs> Which is a bit of a play on words. Uh, take a listen and I'll uh, tell you the story behind it. Every day, every way Take your time To succeed Just how free we can be Every day, every way Time I'm waiting For unsuspecting skills Let it go No waiting Okay, well there you go, opto miss trick, or optimistic, depending on uh, how you say it and what your view is. When I wrote this track, I wanted to get this optimistic feeling or view about uh, everything around you in life being wonderful and optimistic. You can be optimistic about it, yeah. And uh, that's what it had, it had this sort of feel. And uh, so I created really exactly what I wanted within that music and uh, later Alan put his words in there and uh, I know that he was telling me that uh, <laughs> it's a long story I won't tell you too much about it except to say that it's got connotations to my wife <laughs> it is a very catchy piece of music and it's not a, a sort of style of music that you might associate me with but that's what I did and uh, Alan did a great job on the vocals and the, the lyrics and the things like that. So, really nice track. Uh, played on a number of different amplifiers over the, the, the period. Probably played on a PRS, the green one, 1991. Or it could have been one of the others. Now, the last track on here, to be honest, it's not one of my 
most favourites. It's not mixed right, I don't think. I should have taken those guitars down. And uh, it, it sort of plays itself off this sort of synth and this guitar doing this thing. You'll hear it. But, uh, yeah, it, it's got something to say, but, uh, yeah, in a strange sort of way. But that's what dark matter is, in a strange sort of way. <laughs> Take a listen. Well done. Who wins, not you. Who wins, not you. Why follow? Ask yourselves. Will tomorrow still be there? Be true to you. Don't fall. Be true to you. Don't fall. Down the spiral of deceit. 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 Down the spiral of deceit. Yeah, because it's played around this uh, sort of riff with this keyboard as well. Uh, it's like an arpeggio. Uh, yeah, a bit weird to sort of mix, but I, I don't think I mixed it right, but don't worry about that. Some people will love it, some people won't. And uh, The fact that this track 16 is completely irrelevant because we put these tracks on here in a totally random order. Actually, they were just the order that we wanted to, uh, you know, let's throw them on an album and listen. And that's what we did, and we never changed the uh, the order. So some of these, you know, some people make albums where everything's up at the top, all the good stuff, and all the craps at the bottom, <laughs> for want of a better word. All the fillers are further down. Well, that wasn't the case uh, when we made this album, uh, Gravity Waves. Well, that should have given you a bit of an insight into Gravity Waves, the CD from Tony McKenzie and Alan Bruce. And... Um, as I said, it is something that's rather different than what people might have expected. Uh, personally, I like it. I think it's got some great tracks on there uh, that are very different than what I've done in the past. And uh, when you make an album like this, it's, you're, you're stuck in it. You can't no get away from it. You're in there, for sure. Anyway, did you notice the cover of this thing? I'll probably put a big one up there somewhere. Uh, yeah sort of psychedelic stuff man but the thing is about this cover as I look at it and you can look at it up there is it's got an awful lot of things in it uh, it's got equipment from some of the reviews I've done and it's got various things that represent the album and in a number of ways but you have to keep going back and keep looking at the album cover because if you don't you'll never find them all it's quite uh, Quite amazing, really. Yeah, I love it. I think it's uh, it's one of the best album covers uh, that I could have come up with, really, uh, from anywhere, at any time, in any place. Yeah. So there's a quick rundown of the uh, Gravity Wave CD, and uh, if you like any of it, listen, go and buy it. I need the money. I've got to get the money back for this thing, as you will find out on subsequent videos. Uh, of how we made this and, and so on and so forth and uh, it's even got a few little ditties inside here well hidden that I'm not going to show you you need to yeah you can't get any of this from downloads <laughs> that's to be the real deal so I hope you've enjoyed listening to the CD or parts of the CD with me and uh, the name of the game is really to uh, to let you guys listen to stuff that you will have never heard the likes of from me before. Some of my older stuff, some of my more modern stuff, stuff that I only wrote not long ago. And the same with Alan Bruce. Most of the lyrics in this, in this album, were not written six months ago. So uh, it's all good stuff. I think we started in January, actually, so it might have been eight months ago. <laughs> it's about January we started again uh, to get this thing complete. That's it for now, and uh, as I said, if you like the album, go to www.gravitywavescd.com.
Amazon.com and buy one, or you can go to iTunes or CD Baby or Amazon or any of them other places, you know. But there's no streaming going on on this one. We, we stopped all that because uh, actually it was costing us money and uh, big time. Uh, so we've gone down all the routes in getting this one done. But you're going to learn all about that and why people are doing that sort of thing uh, a bit later in the next video, which will be quite an extensive video, so it will take me a little bit of time to make. Until next time, hope you've enjoyed it. I really enjoyed making this video and wanting to get you to listen to my music because I feel strong about the music that I make. And, uh, as, and indeed, as you probably do too. Uh, so... Rock and roll. Till next time. Now get out of here.